So what do you picture when you think of Y2K? Maybe it's a clear phone, inflatable furniture, Courtney Cox with micro bangs, <gasps> that weird song the Spice Girls released after Ginger left. Let me tell you what I picture in my mind's eye when I think of Y2K. I picture this character, Xenon Carr, who is the main character of today's flick, Xenon, girl of the 21st century. Ah! Which actually technically came out in 1999, so this movie was right on the cusp of Y2K. It was on the Y2K cusp the Y2 cusp, and was very far ahead of its time in my humble opinion. So this is a Disney Channel original movie, also lovingly known as a DCOM by the youngsters. It's about a 13 year old girl who lives on an earth orbiting space station with her family in the year 2049, but her tendency to cause mischief gets her exiled to the worst place imaginable, planet earth. <laughs> What? So while on Earth, she discovers a plan uh, masterminded by the space station sketchball owner, and she will stop at nothing to save the space station and her parents. We'll talk later, okay? I've got a space day to save. Starring frosted tips, space hat, Bill Clinton, shoulder pads, tiny hands, chicken shirt, regular airplane, space poop, sport, cheetah girl, and way too much information. <laughs> I know that this was based on a book, okay, but for real. <laughs> Considering that this was a kid's movie, it just has too many space words. Propulsion module solar coil. Class five solar flare. Class five solar flare. Talk to my communicator who need a lab with the weightless chamber. We'd fully blow an O-ring if we had to return to Earth, huh, Mom? Or maybe it was just confusing to me because I was literally deathly ill when I watched the movie, wrote the script, and shot the footage for today's video. <laughs> <coughs> Anywho, guys, buckle up your lap belts only. It's time to take a regular airplane several light years into the future. Avec Zenon, fille du 21e siècle. Oops, I accidentally said that in French. <laughs> I've been practicing because of today's sponsor. Be right back. Hey. Can I tell you something? Yeah, I, I got I got something on my mind. I, I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I just, I got to tell you something. What are you doing? So, you know how you're always saying that weird sentence you like to say? You know, it's that, that little phrase you say constantly. Oh. Yes, exactly, exactly that one. Listen, I didn't know how to tell you this, but that phrase is, it, it's not real English, it's, it's gibberish. <laughs> Oh, oh God, okay, you, see, you seem upset. Look, I, I knew you would get hostile, but if you will just hear me out, I think I have something really cool that could help you. Nick? No, no, Nick can't help you. Juanita? Juanita? Like, as in our old next door neighbor from 14 years ago? No, I don't even talk to her anymore. Listen, it's an app. It's actually an app that I use called Babbel. See, right here. It's one of the top language learning apps in the world. Babbel, can you try to say it? No. Close. Babble. Babble. You'll get there. <laughs> so Babble's intuitive lessons help you learn a language through real life conversations and it has been so helpful for me with brushing up on my French. Because as you know, I used to be fluent in French in high school. Remember when awards for it? I, 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 I took six years of it. I even got hired by the college I went to to tutor other people in it. And guess what? After years of not using it, I lost a lot of it. But Babbel is scientifically proven to help you learn a new language in three weeks. And the lessons are designed by real language teachers, so I've already made huge strides. Talking? Okay. Actually, yes. <laughs> Check it out. Mon petit perroquet, je t'aime, bien que tu me détestes. Good girl. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, merci. <laughs> Help you learn French with Babbel later? Of course. Heck, let's do it right now. See, look, Babbel teaches you to have real conversations, and in these lessons, help you have practical conversations about business, travel, relationships, and more. Three weeks later. You! <laughs> it's me. Hey, just checking in now that it's been a couple weeks since you've been using Babbel. I just want to know, like, what words you've learned and all that. Can you tell me how to say yes in Russian? Da. Da, exactly. <laughs> so good. How about the French word for dad? Papa. Papa. I'm so proud. See, what did I tell you? You don't need gibberish. You just needed babble. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, 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 my turn, my turn, my turn. Uh, quiz me, just give me a word to say in French. Goodbye. Goodbye is au revoir. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Come here, bring it in. <laughs> if you're interested in trying Babbel, you can save 60% off your subscription by clicking the link in my description box. Thank you, Babbel, for sponsoring a portion of today's video, and now back to the show. Hey kids, we're back. So Xenon is a young girl who lives on a space station and runs super weird. <laughs> she of course is quirky, always late, not like other space girls. So one day Xenon gets to class where her hologram teacher is informing the students about President Chelsea Clinton's big plans for the harvesting of underwater vegetation or something. The harvesting of underwater vegetation as a major source of energy. Which, although riveting, isn't quite enough to hold Xenon's attention. Can't imagine why, right? Right off the bat, we're just, it's Getting a little confusing for the two-year-olds that watched this in 1999. So she informs her bestie Nebula, played by Raven <laughs> Simone, that this really popular boy band that they both love called uh, Microbe is coming to play a concert at their space station. And Microbe? They're about as thermal as some band from back in 2025. Back in 2025? What year is this set in? 2049? Monday, April 18, 2049. You've been sick. I'll give you an excuse. I'm sick. How old would that make President Chelsea Clinton? Born in 1980. So, oh, okay. She would be 69 years old in this movie. 69. <laughs> so the commander of the space station, Commander Plank, announces to everybody in the cafeteria that this important guy is coming to inspect their space station. His name is... What was his name? Parker Wyndham. Parker Wyndham, owner and chief operating officer of our parent company, Wincom, will be paying our little space station a visit. Kind of a lot of information for the four-year-olds that this was geared towards, but that's just me. He goes on to say that it's very important that they impress this Parker Wyndham gent. Uh, otherwise, he has the power to withdraw funding and shut the whole space station down. It would be a shame to have Wyndham shut us down at such a critical juncture. <sighs> Sounds pretty critical. Hope no one screws it up. Xenon is super stressed, as any teenager would be. She doesn't want this guy to come in and shut down her parents' floating rat research, send them all back to Earth. You'd fully blow an O-ring if we had to return to Earth, huh, Mom? Uh oh. Nuvering didn't exist in 1999. See this So Xenon and her friends are just hanging out, talking about how miserable it would be to live on planet Earth. You gotta watch out for germs, speeding trucks, earthquakes, madmen, muggers, plus. Earth's gravity adds about 30 pounds to you. Can you imagine, Plank? Jeez Louise. <laughs> or, I mean, Cetus Lapidus. It's not all bad here on Earth, okay? We have cool stuff, okay? We have TikTok. Rio! 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 Uh, we have the Kelly Clarkson show. <laughs> We have music. Came from the bottom to the top. But now we flexing on the boat, boy. Okay, fine. I want to live in space. So then they make this stellar plan. It would be stellar. By the way, they talk super cool in this movie, as I'm sure many of you remember. They put their adjective after the noun, kind of like in French. Here we say, I have gray eyes, but in France they would say, you have eyes gray. Well, the space kids do the same thing. I'm digressing, but it's very interesting how they talk. So instead of saying like, we have a big problem, they would say, we have a problem major. Or instead of saying, that's a small problem, they'd say, sweat minor. Adult interference minor. I'm sure it was impressive major. Pressure major or what? It's so spacey. <laughs> anyway, Xenon and her friends come up with this stellar plan to go check out this solar flare that's happening, even though they are not allowed to. So Xenon uh, suits up and takes a little spacewalk. Green screen looks phenomenal almost as good as mine and she's having the time of her life but unfortunately her dad shows up and we get a weirdly long dad reaction that we didn't ask for <laughs> huh? uh... <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> So Xenu is in big trouble. And by big trouble, I mean none trouble. None pizza with left beef. 
mess up again and your father and I will be forced to ground you. Hey moms, I think you're like 50 years late for Star Wars Con. That is the third time this month you have pushed her into the stress helmet. So Mr. Wyndham finally arrives to inspect the space station and he has this sketchy little assistant named Mr. Lutz. Remember Mr. Lutz, okay? Because one night while digging through space trash and making a bunch of weird noises, <gasps> Xenon happens to catch Mr. Lutz lurking around a restricted section of the space station where he is not supposed to be. Time to do some sketchy sh <gasps> She suspects that maybe these gentlemen really aren't there to help the space station, but rather to not help it. So she has no choice but to sneak into the super top secret zone herself and spy on Mr. Lutz. She sees him doing something that appears pretty shady or sketchy, if you will. He's got a disc that he drops, but when she tries to escape the restricted area to go tell, she triggers the alarm and gets again in big trouble. But this time it's for real trouble. We're grounding you. I understand that. No, see, I mean, we're really grounding you. What? <gasps> not planet Earth. Not that gross, hideous planet where you're 30 pounds fatter because of gravity. Can you imagine Plank? I don't know why it's so funny to me that being sent to Earth is a severe punishment. <laughs> So I forgot to mention, uh, Nebula is super into jewelry and they make jewelry out of space trash. And she happens to find that little disc that Mr. Lutz dropped and she gives it to Xenon as like her parting goodbye gift. Like, sorry, you have to go live on earth where you're gonna be fat. Here's an earring. How's it look? More on the disc later, so don't forget it in all of its holographic glory. Anywho, back to Xenon uh, getting shipped from space to Earth via this pretty regular looking aircraft with no space gear and no protection apart from a seatbelt. <laughs> and it looks like they get to Earth in about five minutes. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that this should be Academy Award level special effects, okay? But come on, my 10 year old self deserved better than this. They don't even look like any time has passed by the time they land. Like, why didn't we get a fun scene of Xenon maybe looking out the window at the galaxy or something? Maybe I'm being picky, but I feel like they could have cut down the disappointed dad scene a little bit to make room for time passing on the space plane scene. Y'all, I hated that fall so much. I don't even want to put it into the female protagonist fall compilation, but I will. On that note, kids, we have to take a short break, but don't touch that dial. <laughs> when we come back, Xenon's life on Earth gets a little weird. See you there. Hey, I'm I'm Jamie French, and, and you're watching my YouTube channel. So how's your mom? Still skinny as a rail, I'll bet. Uh, yeah, so this is Xenon's aunt, Judy, her Earth aunt. Judy's fun, she is incredibly insecure. I know zip about kids. That's why I'm such a bad grown-up. I'd be dead in 24 hours. And also, Aunt Judy hates space. Aunt Judy, she hates space. Hope she doesn't accidentally end up boarding one of those regular aircrafts and getting stuck in space later. So Aunt Judy takes Xenon out to a burger joint where she locks eyes with this super cute boy who is sitting next to this super annoying girl. Girl who has this really unique talent. She can like mouth certain words, but then other words come out. Alter graphic at the store. Pay attention. <laughs> so like I was saying. But back to the boy. Uh, his name is Greg, and he ends up being her love interest throughout the rest of the movie, whilst this girl Margie becomes the antagonist, the bully. The Walmart Regina George, if you will. Actually, it's Xenon. Like, that's a whole lot better. <laughs> oh my god, like 10 blue chickens had to die just so she could she look that stupid. <sighs> Guys, Earth school is terrible for poor little Xenu. She can't do any Earth stuff, right? Margie pushes her into the pool. Neither her parents nor her aunt told her that she would need lunch money, so Greg has to pay for her fruit. And to top it all off, her fellow classmates are 36 year olds. 
So one day Greg invites Zebo to come hang out with him at his work, which is at a horsey place. I work at a stable, you know, horses. It's kind of cool. And the horsey place date is very romantic, you know, the smell of manure, Greg physically forcing Xenon to brush the horse, weird rays of light shooting up from the ground. Uh. Need I say more? Uh. Classic Zoltron. <laughs> Can't get used to gravity. <laughs> So then they go to Din Din at a hot dog joint. Considering how many horses I'm gonna have to groom to pay for tonight, I'm glad to know you're loving it. I am. I'm loving it. Uh, Greg, you're at a glorified McDonald's, okay? <laughs> the condiment bottles are like those dollar store squeezy bottles. <laughs> Let's dial back the guilt trip. Anywho, Xenon glances across the way, and who does she see but the sketchball king what? himself, Mr. Lutz. Time to do some sketchy sh Which means he's following her. What could he be looking for? God. Side note, guys, Greg here is a hacker. He's one of those hackers who be like, I'm in. Because <laughs> hackers be like, I'm in. <laughs> So he is able to hack into Wincom's data bank, data bank, and he finds out that they don't quite have the finances that Mr. Wyndham so generously promised to the space station. Why would Wyndham promise the space station more money if he didn't have it? That's the alpha question, isn't it? Oh yeah, I forgot. Greg uh, says things are alpha. Pretty alpha, huh? If Greg then were a real life person now, he would probably have a podcast where he told us women really neat facts about ourselves. Women preserve their value, men create it. In addition to to his CIA level hacker skills, Greg also ends up finding out why Lutz is after Zuzu, based on essentially no information. I put my luggage down and I told Wyndham that he didn't fool me for a minute. Then I picked up my luggage and I turned away. Were you wearing that? Wow, so insightful and so alpha. So everything is starting to make sense now, you guys. They realize that Lutz is after the beautiful holographic disc. Then they get caught in the rain. Rain. I remember this. Oh, you don't get out much, do you? Mm -mm. I had an alpha time tonight. I guess that very important super top secret space disc is water resistant. Mm -mm. So we meet this other hacker named Andrew. I guess he's friends with Greg or something. He's an even hackier hacker. He be like, I'm in <laughs> even more. <laughs> I'm getting hacked. No, no, this is major. I've never seen code like this. What is that, video game? No, Tony, we're getting hacked. Can't stop him, do something McGee. So they give the holographic space cracker to Andrew, who informs them that actually it is a highly sophisticated, untraceable nanovirus that'll slowly continue to replicate inside a system until the entire hard drive crashes down and self-destructs. Meaning Sketchball Mr. Lutz actually implanted a virus into the space station that night that he was lurking in the restricted area. A virus that has slowly been eating away at the space station's uh servers, causing tons of systems to fail, meaning eventually they could reach total system failure, which would mean the space station would, I guess, blow up and Zenith's parents would die. Wait, so why are Lutz and Wyndham looking for that disc if the computer virus is already implanted? Confusing, even for my self of average intelligence. <laughs> so Xenon tries to tell her parents all of this, but of course they don't listen. They're like, oh, Zendaya, <laughs> you silly goose. <laughs> You've been eating too many earth foods. <laughs> Sweetheart, we know you're in a new environment and you're disorienting, but you seem to have made a new friend. Why don't you make the best of it? Will you guys listen to me? Meanwhile, their home is literally falling apart. Here we go again. The whole place is shutting down and they're just like, oh, what a weird coincidence. But our daughter's definitely full of baloney. <laughs> they eat baloney on earth. So since her scientist parents are too stupid, Zoltar has to turn to That So Raven for help. What is That So Raven's name again? Nebulator! Nebula. Zoltar has to turn to Nebula for help. But I was right about Wyndham. He put this gunkball nanovirus into your computers. We tried uploading the undo disk from here, but we can't. The only way I can possibly help is to get up there with a disk. And to do that, I need you. What can I do? Did I, I think I missed something. We tried uploading the undo disc from here, but we can't. What is an undo disc? I feel like maybe Andrew has one. He happens to have one by pure 
happenstance. I don't remember what the undo disc is. I have managed to refashion this program into an undo file. That should remove the bugs from whatever system they've been- I kind of remember my eyes glazing over a lot of this as a kid. It's probably why I don't remember much apart from zoom, zoom, zoom. Anyway, the plan is Raven, I mean Nebula, will go to the shipping bay, check the schedule, and let Xenon know when the next cargo ship is leaving from Earth to space so that she can secretly board it. <laughs> that means I have to break in down there, Z. So? I'm not you, you know. Sorry, Neb. For today, you're going to have to be. Why'd you say that so weird? On that note, kids, we have to take one more short break, and when we come back, the stellar conclusion. Don't miss it. Hey kids, it's the next day, and I feel slightly better. Anyway, so where were we? So Xenon has a video message for Aunt Judy. I hate to do this to you, Aunt Judy, because you've been stellar major. Right now, it looks like I'm the only one who can save my friends and family. Gotta go. Love you. Bye. Go? <sighs> go where? <laughs> Oh man, I love Aunt Judy. I'm such a bad grown-up. So guys, you heard the plan, okay? Nebula and this other kid have to break into the shipping bay and check the cargo shuttle schedule. Typical thing to occur in a kid's movie. But while they're in there, the power to the station temporarily gets shut off and they get locked in there for several hours. Three hours they've been stuck in here, Leo. Meanwhile, Xenon's just gallivanting with Greg, not a care in the world, having a very alpha time. Yeah, you're not like girls around here. You're, uh... I don't know. Alpha extreme. Wasn't that every girl's dream in 1999? To be not like other girls, but rather alpha extreme. Z, you have to leave now! A cargo ship's being launched from Wincom in less than an hour! Okay guys, so it's a race against time for these literal children to get to the cargo shipping bay. Now! But they obviously can't tell their parents what they're up to, so you're probably thinking to yourself like, okay, they're gonna hop on their bikes and just like, pedal crazy hard, right? Well, no, the creators of this movie actually thought to themselves, you know what would be an even better idea? Why don't we just have the kids drive Andrew's parents' car that just so happens to have autopilot? It's got an autopilot. Am I crazy or does that car look a lot like that car that those other kids stole from the movie Sleepover? You know, the one that also happened to have <laughs> autopilot? Okay, yeah, they don't look alike at all. I forgot that one was a green clown car, but why did kids' movies do this? Where are the parents when these clown cars are stolen? So, you do know how to pilot this thing. What's the no? Uh, who's that? And why did Margie have to ride in the trunk? <laughs> Pop the trunk. So after all of that clown car thievery, they miss the cargo ship, which means Nebula and that other kid got stuck in that one place for three hours for literally no reason. Think we ought to go to the cops? And tell them what? That we're literal children trying to commit a crime? They'd never believe us, no. We can't go to the police. We take this to our grave, everyone, say it. Oops, sorry, got caught up in being a crime committing tween in a TV movie or drama. So Xenon uh, is defeated. She has lost all hope until Meanie Margie saves the day when she reminds everybody that that boy band, Microbe, remember from earlier? They are uh, also taking a trip to the space station for that concert. Margie, you are a mega genius. I know. Why? Because you rode all the way here in the trunk of a clown car that had plenty of room in the back seat. So now the new plan is to sneak onto the other regular airplane that is taking Microbe to the space station. So they head to the, I guess it's like a launch event to send Microbe into space. It's taking place at Wyndham headquarters and they arrive there the next day, still in Andrew's parents' car. Did they stay out all night? <laughs> They're wearing the same clothes, so I guess Andrew's parents don't need their car or wonder where their son is. <laughs> anyway, the security guy won't let them in, so they just bust through the gate and then Xenon just waltzes backstage to talk to the band. <laughs> Mr. Zoa, it's me, Xenon Carr, your contest winner. Listen, I'm here instead of up there, but you have to take me back up there with you. Oh yeah, so before Xenon got shipped back to Earth, I think I forgot to talk about this part, she had won this contest with Microbe. Her prize being that she would get to dance on stage with them during their concert at the space station. So Protozoa, which is the lead singer with next level Frosted Dibs, recognizes her as the contest winner. Gentlemen. You obviously don't know who this is. <laughs> so not only does he allow Xenon to board his spaceship, but he also offers these opposing security guards a job. You can be Wyndham's monkeys for the rest of your lives, or might you consider a career in rock and roll? 
rock and roll. I do not remember that part as a kid. <laughs> He's like, I want this girl to board this ship so bad. I'm willing to hire two new <laughs> red cops. By order of the Pinky Blind. This really was inspired, sir. Sending such a popular group up to the space station hours before it's going to self-destruct. What a perfect smoke screen to keep any fingers from ever being pointed at you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I missed that. Mr. Lutz, can you... Can you explain that one more time? The plan is still unclear. Sending such a popular group up to the space station hours before it's going to self-destruct. So Aunt Judy shows up looking for Xenon, which tips off Wyndham and Lutz that Xenon is on the spaceship with him. <laughs> so they run to catch her and they are able to board the spaceship just exactly as it's lifting off. They just open the door right up and hopped right on in. But when the plane tilts up for takeoff, they slide backwards into a room, I don't know. <laughs> so then Zeno springs into action and slides down also, just giggling our way down and locks them in. <laughs> Now you have to ride all the way to space with no space gear, no seatbelt, and no nothing. Ah, no! Meanwhile, the space station is still falling apart. Why is this happening? Gee, I wonder. Maybe it was that very clear explanation Xenon gave you, supported by evidence and receipts, but you chose to ignore it and be dim-witted grown-ups. So, microbe finally arrives at the space station, and they fall. <laughs> Also, Aunt Judy and Commander Plank experience like a, a love at first sight thing. They're as hard as it may be to believe she's telling you the truth. Who are you? And he is so attracted and in love with Aunt Judy immediately that he locks her and Xenon in his office. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting too detailed here, but it was so funny because Xenon has to call Andrew on her tablet because her tablet can't make local calls or something. You unblocked my communicator for calls between Earth and the space day, but now I can't get it to make local calls. This is so confusing for a kid. I can hear the comments now being like, this was not confusing. I understood all of it at four years old. So Nebula breaks in. Peekaboo! And I guess squeezes them through this very tiny hole that they of course don't show. Oh, okay. I love how some grown woman in the background yells, Cetus Lapidus! Who is Cetus and who is Lapidus is what I would have known. Anyway, guys, at the last possible second, Xenu makes it to the main computer with the undo disc. I got the undo disc! And all the grown ups are just like, all right, well, we're seconds from dying and we don't really believe your story and our ship's about to blow up, but go ahead. Go ahead and try 16 different wingding fonts access codes to save our ship. Incorrect. Access code. What is the, what access code? Did Andrew tell her the undo disc would need an access code? And she just like kind of knows it, but maybe didn't write it down. What, did I miss this part? I've never seen a disc like this one. <sighs> Sick. Total system rehabilitating. <laughs> Yay! Yay for wingdings! So since they saved the space station, the microbe concert still gets to happen. Lucky for us. That song went so hard in 1999. Actually, who am I kidding? It still goes hard. So if you will remember, Xenon won that contest, right? Meaning she was supposed to be able to get up and dance on stage with Protozoa, but since she already got to hang out with him and like play cards with him on the regular plane ride over to the space station, she gives the opportunity to Nebula. Nebula! Nebula! Get on up here and dance with me, three feet away from the rest of the crowd. Come here, my little Brussels sprout! So the bad guys get arrested. Arrest those men! Uh the space station is saved. Xenon's parents are proud of her. Did I ever tell you how truly amazing I think you are? Commander Plank and Aunt Judy end up, like, together, I guess, even though they've only known each other for five minutes. And Greg gets left on miserable, fat Earth. <laughs> It's not that funny. Why was there no end to their love story? That's not very alpha. I guess we will have to wait and watch the Zequil. Not to be confused with Zequil, the non-habit forming sleep aid. Oh man, what a blast major. What a confusing, chaotic, overly detailed blast major. 
Let's read some super good reviews. This one was written by a 13 year old. It is entitled, wow, 2049, like that's gonna happen. I have to totally disagree with the people before me. For one, Kristen Storms can't act for her life. I'm 13 and I watched Xenon Girl in 21st Century when I was like nine and I still successfully hated it. The plot goes nowhere, the characters are pointless and the cool futuristic language is pretty lame. Sorry to pop your bubble folks, but the whole movie's pointless. The best part of the movie is either the insane costumes or the ending song zoom 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 definitely the song zoom 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 you make my heart go boom 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 supernova girl definitely the song <laughs> This is a very good review. We also got a 10 out of 10. Most people really liked it. This review is entitled Zoom Zoom Zoom. The best original Disney Channel movie hands down. A hilarious romp. Kirsten Storms is excellent in a breakthrough performance. However, the character that steals the show is diabolical Margie. Margie stole the show? Uh Personally, uh, I like the movie, but I just thought it had too much information, too many words, you know? But I have to say, I think the directors did a pretty good job given like the what they had. The set was very consistent. I noticed during certain, like during the uh, microbe launch when they were gonna send microbe into space, the banners and everything were very consistent. The high school, it looked like to be shot in an actual high school. Even the space station looked very spacey. I thought they did a pretty good job for a Disney Channel movie. It's just for kids or adults like myself who can't process information that quickly i just felt like it was a lot i gotta go guys i gotta go take a ride in my tiny tiny clown car with autopilot <laughs> subscribe to my channel if you want to be friends follow me on my other social media accounts i'm really trying to get my twitter popping again so if you want to see my 2 a.m deep thoughts talk to me over there where it's easier to converse with each other also big thanks again to babble for sponsoring a portion of today's video don't forget to click the link in my description box for 60 percent off your subscription Description. Thanks for being here, especially if you stuck around this whole time, and I will see you guys in the next one. See this? Love you. What are the people in the audience wearing at the microbe launch? They're dressed more to go to outer space than the people being launched into outer space. At least in Thunderpants, in the fart movie, they put the kids in space gear in astronaut uh, clothes, you know? I love the drummer from Micro because he just air drums the entire flight to space, which was one hour. He air drummed for one hour. <laughs> So in my last movie review, which was for uh, Feel the Beat with Sophia Carson, I said that she had a Xenon Girl with 21st Century aluminum foil jacket. And a lot of people were like, nah, -uh, Xenon never wore that jacket. Yeah, I know, okay. It was Protozoa who wore the jacket. I was simply saying the title of the movie. Never question me. Oh. 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 Mr. Wyndham really wants to fly back to Earth before the space station blows up, but the spaceship has no fuel. Turn the shuttle around immediately and get us out of here. But we can't do that. We have to refuel and cool the booster cells. No, we don't. I don't care if I die on the plane. I just don't want to die here. Au revoir. That's how French people say their R's. I digress. Again.